Cash Handouts and Christmas JobKeeper. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein in hand and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au which is well, discussing the need, the need for government to deliver cash handouts for families and to extend JobKeeper until Christmas. Now, I can't imagine anyone is surprised by these calls. Well, I've got other videos that I'll probably release later today or before this one, where food bank demand is increasing. And remember last year when banks were urging people to go to food banks to save money and pay their mortgages. Now we're looking for more of this, well, more intervention, more support, because people are not prepared. People are in trouble. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is being urged to deliver direct cash for families and extend JobKeeper, but it comes with an eye-watering price tag. Scott Morrison is being urged to deliver direct cash checks for families and to extend JobKeeper for some companies until Christmas to prevent a longer, deeper recession as a second wave of pandemic cases emerges in Victoria. A shock surge in Victoria is reshaping the debate within the Morrison government about whether to end the $1,500 a fortnight wage subsidy, which is due to be to expire in late September. I mean, here will they will they extend it? Everyone will they extend it? I think there'll be some industries that they. I would be shocked if they didn't. I would be shocked if they didn't extend it to ensure tourism at least survives to some extent. But I mean, they're going to put checks in for zombie companies. Now, well, that would pretty much be the entire tourist industry right now, sadly. I mean, now the industry, guys, it's 60 billion. It's a big part of the economy, it employs a lot of people, has a big flow on effect. It's taken a hit. It is taken a hit. It's forced shutdown. The state forced them all to shut down. All the borders are closed. I can't even leave Queensland unless I get a permit. You know, what if I wanted to go camping down to, uh, you know, New South Wales? Be a bit cold now, so no, no, no chance. Although it'd probably be warmer than my house, but anyway. A new report by the Grat Grattan Institute has urged the Prime Minister to inject up to $90 billion into the economy to help it weather the storm of the biggest economic shock since World War II. This includes an extension of JobKeeper with a new turnover test for some companies until Christmas. But a new turnover test would apply to ensure companies that have bounced back are still kicked off the payments in September. And that's I mean, that's reasonable. There are some businesses that don't need this support mechanism, that don't need it. I don't blame people for taking advantage of it because if your competitor is taking it and you're not, you're at a disadvantage. So this is what happens when the state intervenes in the economy. Everyone needs to get it. You, you don't want them to pick and choose winners. JobKeeper was enacted for six months and is scheduled to wrap up on the 27th of September. But a universal cutoff is blunt, the report warns. Well, the universal implementation of it was blunt. The universal shutdown of everything else is blunt. JobKeeper should be extended for those businesses and employees that are still severely affected by government restrictions. Here's the thing. If you're on JobKeeper, guys, you can't work. Use it as an op See this as an opportunity, as a gift, as a gift to use that time to learn a new skill, to better yourself, to get control of your diet, to say, I'm going to be healthier coming out of this never again am i going to be in this situation i'm going to get our budget sorted you know i'm going to this could be the best thing that happened to some people maybe i'm just being overly optimistic because i've i've pretty much drunk half a liter of coffee in the morning could be it could be i should do that i should see my videos where i'm i'm more optimistic because my coffee buzz is kicking in what do you reckon Businesses currently receiving JobKeeper should be required to retest against the turnover requirements at the end of July and September, where a business's turnover is now better than 20% below pre-crisis levels, support should be withdrawn. Currently, there's a one-off revenue test to qualify for JobKeeper that you must have a 30% downturn in revenue, but payments remain in place for six months regardless of whether you bounced back. I mean, that's it. If they've given it to one, given it to all. On Friday, the Prime Minister said he accepted that many companies currently receiving JobKeeper had already bounced back in terms of revenue. I have no doubt that there are many businesses now, fortunately, 
who have moved back above the threshold. I suspect that's absolutely the case, and I certainly hope it is for the sake of their employees. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what you want. You want that to happen because they'll get the money back one way or another. Come on. They'll just taxes, put a levy on something. Don't worry about it, guys. The government's going to get it. And the MMT crowd, they'll, they just, you know, will argue, print the money and then tax it back later. Manage the economy like that. So, but we are working under the arrangements we put in the legislation and will continue to do so for the current phase of the program. Well, that's it. You want some certainty. We don't want it jumping all over the place. There's so much uncertainty now. You want at least to be able to, to pin your hopes on something. In relation to future phases of what we will need to do in terms of aggregated demand stimulus, well, as I've said on numerous occasions, we'll be announcing that in time for the economic statement. I mean, here we go. The unions are worried about, I mean, the economic cliff, and that is a big issue. I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll see more what happens when, uh, uh, you know, the mini budget gets released. The Grattan Institute's recovery book, What Australian Governments Should Do Now, also calls for direct cash payments to stimulate the economy rather than bring forward tax cuts, of course. The federal government should extend direct cash payments to households to boost spending, it states. Estimators suggest that each dollar of cash payments made to low-income or liquidity-constrained households boost GDP by between $0.60 cents and $1, and $0.60 cents and $1, with more recent estimates being high, higher. You know what's more effective than this is the Home Builder Scheme. Every $25,000 government spends, it boosts the economy by $175,000 because you've got to kick in your own hundred fifty grand. Just think of that. People don't tend to appreciate, well, at least all the ones I'm talking to, don't tend to appreciate that. And recent evidence shows such payments are effective in boosting spending, thereby employment and economic activity. There are fears that a triple whammy of the $1,500 a fortnight JobKeeper, the doubling of the $1,100 JobSeeker payment, and mortgage honeymoon for distressed homeowners all end at the same time in late September, could see unemployment spike and the economic cliff, the economy hitting a fiscal cliff. They forgot to mention the remove, well, the end of the trading while insolvent liability for directors. You know that that's, that's up in the air. That's also going to remove then. So you may see companies forced to lay off staff. The report also suggests that the permanent rate of job seekers should be increased by at least 100 a week and Commonwealth rent assistance should be increased by 40%. 40%. Well, they've gotten, they've got a $75 a week increase. The pandemic is the biggest social and economic shock since World War II, the report states. Without further stimulus, unemployment will remain too high and the economy will grow more slowly than it than it could for many years. Well, unemployment, if you look at the Roy Morgan data, unemployment, underemployment, right now is sitting at 25% of the workforce. The problem is people are gonna, people are gonna leave the workforce. There's gonna be scarring, people won't get back in. That gets harder the older you get. But also you've got the young people who are coming fresh out of uni. I met a lawyer the other day, 7-Eleven. You know, when I was getting my $1, $1 coffee and he was hoping you know, well, he wasn't a lawyer, he was a student. He was hoping it'll all sort out next year. And I go, mate, you're too young to remember a recession. This plays out after a while. It's kind of a little sad, actually. At the weekend, reports emerged the $275 a week job seeker payment, which was tempor temporarily doubled to 550 a week during the pandemic, should be increased by $75 from October. That would deliver a weekly rate of 350 a week. For thousands of people who are expecting to lose their jobs when JobKeeper expires in late September. Labor Treasury spokesman Jim Chalmers has accused the Morrison government of keeping the report a secret until after the Eden Monaro by-election. Businesses are laying off workers because of the uncertainty this is creating, he said. Scott Morrison should release the JobKeeper review immediately, not Australian, not to keep Australians in the dark. Here's the thing, guys. If you're keeping people on just for JobKeeper... Should you? If, you know, if you need it to go until December, does that mean your business is already at the end? You need to cut back. You need to save costs. This is going to be a tough time. If you're getting JobKeeper, you need to prepare for, you need to get your budget. 
in your household down to 350 a week. That's what people need to prepare for now. And that's when we see, once these mortgage holidays disappear and people forced to go on 350 a week, what will really happen to the property market. I mean, there's ways you can do it. Rent out some rooms, get more people in, share. You know, Cut your costs, get rid of every subscription, every single thing you do. Cut down to the bone. You'll learn what luxuries are. You'll learn what luxuries are. What well, one time we couldn't, couldn't have the money to replace our gas instantaneous hot water system. So what do we do? You boil the water on in a pot, put it in the bath. That's how you have baths, hot water baths there. You just do it for a while. It was summer in Queensland, so it wasn't really that big an issue. But you've got to find ways to save money. When push comes to shove, you sell all the toys, all the electronic gizmos. I think there are a lot of people that realize their investments are, are worthless. It's going to be tough this year. So what do you think, everyone? Would you like the government to hand out money? Or do you, would you rather it's investing it somewhat smarter? I don't know. Free cash handouts people love. And everyone will take it. I guarantee you most of the viewers of the channel who are the gold bugs or silver bugs, I know where that money's going. Or the crypto guys. We know where all that's going. Now, I guarantee you Rachel would use it to argue for a new overlocker. Because she got a, se a sewing machine from the last government stimulus back in Ruddy's days and honestly she's made her wedding dress she made all clothes for the kids right now she's in the middle of making a dress for Josephine's third birthday so it's paid for itself although we do have a lot of fabric stored here and all the all the other blokes who've got misses who are you know sewing nutters will understand how much how many reams rolls you have Anyway, everyone, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via using our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from High Success, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.